Meanup, the world's smallest blockchain. Um, Meanup have actually been doing some pretty good things. They, they are, to be fair, the world's first zero knowledge blockchain as well. Um, and whilst they launch a pretty much one of the worst times they could have in 2021, uh, I do think this is going to hit a new all-time high. I think there's immense potential in this coin. Uh, and I'll talk about what it can hit in this video. Before I get into it though, guys, if you're new here, uh, these are the first 26 coins that I did videos about on the channel. Now, in my videos, I showed myself buying these coins because I expected them to make me very good money. Uh, and you can see what the prices of these coins were when I recorded my videos. You can also see the highs these coins hit less than a year and a half on and what your profit would have been if you had put in $100 into each one. And if you had and sat on them for like say 16, 17 months and then sold them, your profit would have been over 123 grand, which is pretty good. Now I sold all of these, we had the market crash and since then I've been buying up new cryptos that I share on my website, copymycrypto.com. So anytime I find a coin that I think can do a 40, a 50, a 100X, the coins that are gonna make me very good money, I buy them. And what that means is I'll jump onto the site, I'll tell my members about the coin, uh, the profits I think it can have, the percentage of my cash I'm putting in, the members can copy along. What this means is they'll make the exact same profits as me. There's a nice added bonus there as well. They don't have to do any work. They don't have to research the markets. You know, the 30,000 odd cryptos that there are, they don't have to do. Um, and if that sounds good to you, just head over to copymycrypto.com now. There's a link in the description. On the site, what you'll see are the things I've said in the past and what ended up happening. Um, you can also see what the members have earned. It's all on the site, it's all public record, it's all on the history of this channel. And if you like what you see, guys, join me there. Now, Mina. Uh, so Mina is a minimal, succinct blockchain. It's actually the size of 22 KB which when you compare that to Bitcoin's 300 gigabyte blockchain, it's bloody tiny. Um, so it was built to curtail computational requirements so that dApps can run more efficiently. Um, and like I said, they describe themselves as the world's smallest blockchain or the world's light, lightest blockchain. Um, now, the project was rebranded from Coda Protocol to Mina Protocol in October of 2020. As I said, by the way, they launched at pretty much the worst possible time. They launched right at the peak of this first cycle of 2021. Uh, its high was pretty much upon launch, which was $9.91. Uh, so actually surprisingly accurate for the coin market cap there. Um, in the second wave of the bull cycle, didn't really do too much, didn't get back to those heights. Now, the supply, the majority of the supply is now out, which is good. Um, so the main objective is to make the best, easiest protocol effectively for, um, for dApps. Now, um, the protocol uses zero knowledge, succinct, non-interactive arguments of knowledge, as in ZK Snarks, which is a cryptographic proof that enables someone to authenticate information without revealing the information. Uh, however, enabling a user to trace the platform back to its genesis block can be impractical in large networks. So as a result, Mina have created this tiny, tiny network um, where users uh, end users can check compressed proofs to check uh, the history of the last few blocks rather than having to go through an entire block history. Uh, again, nice premise. Um, they've got some pretty good, um, like a good system in place. So they've got your verifiers, they've got um, block producers and they've got snarkers. So verifiers, um, interact with the Z ZK snarks that deal with um, certifying the consensus. Each Mina protocol user is considered a verifier, provided that their device can handle a 22 kilobyte chain and withstand a few sec milliseconds of processing time. So everyone can. Uh, there's literally not a computer on the planet that can't do that. Uh, block producers take the form of stakers or miners. They earn block rewards and transaction fee payments. Um, and 
they don't actually slash incentives that go to block producers, um, which is kind of different. They've also and then the snarkers, um, also known as provers, produce zk snarks used in verified transactions. So the block producers pay snarkers from the overall transaction fees they receive uh, for adding new blocks. Um, again, the system works pretty damn well. Um, and they've been up and running for a couple of years now. Uh, in terms of backers, you've got Coinbase as one of the backers, Polychain as one of the backers, and Three Arrows. Obviously, Three Arrows is long dead now. Three Arrows, yeah. Is it Three Arrows? My brain. I'll have to double check that. Um, so, Mina is, the build, is building the privacy and security layer for Web3 with zero knowledge proofs. Now, whilst bodes really well for Mina, um, and I've spoken about that with a couple of the projects that do something kind of similar, by ensuring the privacy, this is a perfect system for enterprise, for business. Because the thing is, within the privacy realm, there are a couple of issues, right? If you are um, a crypto project that is obscuring all transactions and hiding everything, um, by the way, that's not a bad thing, and I'm not using the word hiding in a negative way here. Um, but if it is obscuring transactions for peer-to-peer -peer transactions, then there's a big issue. And it's not a big issue from my perspective, it's a big issue from government perspective. Because governments, particularly the EU as of late, are the ones that want to see everything. And they do this fear-mongering approach of is fueling terrorism or it's money laundering or whatever other bullshit that they like to say. But what that means is a cryptocurrency project that is defined as a privacy coin are getting delisted. And that is happening everywhere across Europe. That will continue to happen because this is the narrative that's taken hold. And what these the governments will do is scare exchanges. And they will threaten exchanges, which they have done. If an exchange does not delist these privacy coins, you cannot run in this jurisdiction. And you then got an exchange or a CEO of an exchange that's going, right, do I hold to my morals and say, no, these deserve to be listed, these privacy coins, or do I make money? And it's always going to boil down to money. So what I like about Mina is it's not a privacy coin in the sense of like what Monero is. Mina have developed a zero knowledge blockchain that basically can ensure that if a, um, a company wanted to start getting, utilizing uh, blockchain infrastructure, they could do with Mina because a company has the right to keep certain elements of their um, of their, their transactions private. And I'm not saying that they have the right more than an individual, but there's at least an intel, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a, a logic there, which is why a coin like Mina won't suffer the same issues that Monero and Pirate Chain and all the other privacy coins are suffering right now and will continue to do so. So Mina have built something quite sensible here. It's a perfect system for companies and for uh, development. Now, um, one thing I'm not, and I will say really not enamored by, is like where Mina's at right now uh, in terms of um, the ecosystem. Now, they have ecosystem grants up, in, up and running. Um, and make no mistake about it, Mean is doing very well in terms of price action. Like the fact that it's sort of knocking around a dollar right now is pretty spectacular, given you know it's basically got a billion dollar over a billion dollar market cap. You know it is knocking around what is it the top? I don't even know where it is in terms of overall position. I don't know. Well, it's got to be top one hundred. Uh, no, used to say, didn't it, on coin market cap? It's a shame. So, Mina have good ecosystem uh, grant system in place. So, if anyone wants to build and develop, uh, you can do with Mina. Um, so, so far, there's a few bits and bobs 
that are up and running. You've got uh, AdMeta, which helps Web3 projects acquire users and promote their products in a decentralized way. Um, you got the Foundation Bridge, uh, AirGap, which is a self custody um, wallet, effectively. Um, they've got an auditable social media platform. Uh, they've got wallets. They've got uh, BioSnarks, which is um, opening up possibilities for more democratized drug and biotech development. Uh, I don't see that doing too well, just off of the basis that that is a closed shop. Pharmacies aren't going to, the, pharma, the pharmaceutical industry are not going to be open to that. Um, and they'll close that shop down nice and fast, even if that starts doing all right. Um, overall, I don't think we're there anywhere close yet to where um, MENA needs to be for users. Uh, MENA Arena is a fun, free to play, sort of turn based strategy game. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's doing okay. It's not like we just, I don't know that many people that are, I speak to a lot of people in crypto, right? Um, that are either you, other YouTubers or, you know, just your average sort of retail investor. I know very few people that use and interact with MENA beyond a sort of staking approach. Um, they do have ZK Humans. Now that's something within Mina that I do think could in theory end up doing quite well. This is their sort of protocol for digital identity. Um, and, you know, that's going to be a significant element within the crypto, uh, within the crypto industry and within uh, Web3 and over the next decade. That's going to be something almost everyone has. I hate it, but it is what it is. Uh, Mina's is pretty good, so that could work. ZK Notary I find very interesting. Um, this is a ZK Oracle for Mina powered by TLS Notary. Uh, so they have their own um, like Oracle system in place, already internalized. Um, which I, again I like. I think that's you know, better that than using a sort of third party system like Chainlink as an example. Um, I mean, so there's a couple interesting things, but overall I'm like I'm not enamoured with what I'm seeing. And again, you know, based on the people I'm talking to, and you know, obviously that's not everyone in the world or whatever, but that's a, a lot of people that are heavy in the crypto space. Um, my, the perspective I get is that there's not that many people that are using the system that much at the moment. Um, however, I could see Mina in theory onboarding some big, big names. I think the fact that they are such a tiny blockchain gives them a, like a good USP, a good unique sort of selling point. I think they're... They've got enough here within the market with of things that they can market effectively where they could actually draw a lot of people to them. The bigger thing for me would be if they can start onboarding some significant companies or some significant um, Yeah, some businesses. Some businesses, or even just another route of funding round where they can onboard more investors. No, I think this could do well. I do. Um, I don't think we'll have the information on holders, presumably. Especially the fact that there's privacy to it, right? Um, total stake, epochs, yeah. I mean, total accounts, nearly 200,000. So it's not like there's there's plenty of people that have had it, that have it. Um, I don't know. Interesting one. This is not, and, and it's one where I think they're probably going to land a pretty decent few companies. I think there's a real use case here that isn't necessarily uh, as obvious in with a number of the other blockchains around. Um, I also think having Coinbase as backers is a really strong sign. Uh, downside for Mina, you know, they're on every exchange, so they're not going to have like an exchange bounce, you know, because they're not going to 
because they're, they're already on everywhere. So even in spite of that, I still think this is some one of those coins that can rock up to about 20 bucks. And it's not for the fact that... Um, and that's in spite of the fact, sorry, that there is what I consider kind of a weak ecosystem. What I actually think is really positive here is the size of the blockchain. What I think is very positive here is the end-to-end -end, uh, data privacy. I think this has real use case for businesses. Um, and I think it's a matter of time before they start trying to onboard significant companies. And if they can do that, even just one would be enough for this to blast. Um, I think it just launched at a really crappy time in the last bull cycle. Um, I think the very least its previous high of around 10 bucks can be achieved. Um, but it would not shock me to see 20. Because again, we are, you know, very close to a Bitcoin ETF. We are very close to, um, once that's confirmed, we're going to end up with a, an Ethereum ETF. Um, Bitcoin's probably going to hit 100,000 dollars or so in the next bull cycle probably more ethereum is probably going to hit ten thousand dollars or so maybe more um so those coins alone will have huge market caps so then when you're looking at mina as a 20 dollar coin that would have a 22 billion dollar market cap that's not not even a 20 just a 20 billion dollar market cap. while that's high it's not excessive so i think that's very very doable um but let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and if you're a mina user what do you like about it? What don't you like about it? If you could see one thing on Mina that would, uh, in terms of development, what would it be? Would you like to see more games? Would you like to see more DeFi? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, and guys, if you just want to take the work out of your crypto investing, <clears throat> if you want to make the exact same profits as me in the next bull cycle, you can do. Head over to copymycrypto.com. That's the site I run where I share all my investments with the members. So anytime I find a crypto that I think can make me very good money, I'm going to buy it. And what it means is I'll jump onto the site, I'll talk to my members about the coin, I'll tell them what it is, what profits I think it can have, and what percentage of my cash I'm putting in. When I sell a coin, I do the exact same thing. I let my members know what coin I'm selling, uh, what percentage of my holdings I'm selling, and what I'm doing with my profits. This means the members have no work whatsoever. They can copy along to make the exact same profits. And there's a huge bonus of not having to do any work, not having to research into all the markets, learn chart patterns, learn emerging trends, because myself, my team do it all. Now, if that sounds good to you, head over to copymycrypto.com. Just have a look at the site, see what it's all about. On the site, you'll see the things I've said in the past and what ended up happening. I did a whole course in 2020 about Phantom, about why Phantom was going to be the best investment of the year, why it would at least 100x. That course cost $20, Phantom did nearly 700x gains. The people that took that course, many of them became millionaires just off of that Phantom call alone. When I find the next Phantom that just goes on to copymycrypto.com, I'm not gonna create another course or anything like that. So if you wanna find the next big winner in the markets, copymycrypto.com is where you can do that. Uh, on the site, you'll also see what the members have earned. Everything on the site, by the way, is public record. If you go on the old videos on this channel, you'll be able to confirm everything that you read and see. And if you like what you hear, you like what you read, you like what you watch, then try out the service and I'll see you there. And that's it for me, guys. Have a good day.